All right, today, guys, I'm just going to make sure my battery's good. Yep, I should be able to make it through this episode. Um, today, guys, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going over how to change out one of these fixed English keypads you get from uh, ADT or First Alert or Protection One or whoever you got your alarm from. Um, this is a fixed English one, meaning that you can't do any programming. All right, so if you want to do some programming yourself, um, you're actually locked out of the system if you have only this fixed English one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to um, wire up a new, uh, these, they call these Superbus 2000s. This is the custom English keypad that you can get into program and do programming, add zones, take out zones, change, all kinds of stuff. I can, you know, I, I got other videos out there on how to do that stuff. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to take this old ADT fixed English keypad off your wall and then install a new Superbus 2000 onto your system. I'll, I'll show you how to get it, um, how to take this one out of the program, how to put this one in a program, and get you up and running. Um, I actually have this on my website. They're $45 a piece if you'd like one. This isn't the, the style you would get. This is this is the one you'll get right here. All right. I, I would show you how to do it on this, but I don't want to take this out of the package and get it dirty for my customers. The, it, they're, they work exactly the same. They're both Superbus 2000s. All right. So let's get right to it. So we're going to take this keypad off the wall, and we're going to wire up the new one. All right. So the first thing you want to do is go to your alarm control panel and power it down completely. AC power and battery, okay? Um, I have another video on that to show you how to do that, but let me reach up. I'm going to power mine down. I just disconnected the battery. Let me reach over here, and I disconnected the AC power. All right, so now, totally off. So what you need to do is find yourself a little flathead screwdriver, and of course this is going to be on the wall, but you look underneath, all right, see that little tab? You push on that tab, all right, and lift your keypad, it will come off the wall. You have to, you probably have to pull the door, you know, give yourself some leverage, pull the door, and, and it comes right off, all right. So now that'll come off the wall and that's what's on your wall. All right, so take this all off, take the screws out and everything. You can leave it hanging by the wires. All right, then what you need to do is you take a pair of cutters and you just cut the wire. All right, now what you need to do is you need to strip, strip the wire and strip the four little wires that are hanging out of the wall. Now, it might take some practice, but this is what you need to do. Strip the four wires. They could be different colors too. So, where you cut it off on this one, you just gotta remember what colors. So on the back of this keypad, let me get this out of the way for you. On the back of this keypad, you have red, green, white, and black. Let's see if I can get right up and close. So it's red, green, white, and black, and they had it connected to, the green was blue, the black was black, of course, the red was red, and the white was yellow, okay? So what you do is you go back over here, and you take your new keypad. Now to, on these keypads here, they're all different, really. This has a screw on it. You just undo the screw. Take the back plate off, put it on the wall. Of course, you're going to run your wire through, okay? Screw it on the wall. Now, on the back of these Superbus ones, it's wired, it's labeled a little bit differently. Let me see if I can focus that. I oh, really, I can't. But anyways, on these terminals right here, they are marked ground, B, A, and positive 12 volts. All right. So of course, ground and positive 12 volts, that's going to be your red and your black. Now the A and B, um, if it does get, if you 
you know, it does get confusing. You can look at your control panel and you'll see where the, you know, the white and the green or it could be uh, blue and yellow or whatnot. Right on the control panel up there, it'll be marked Terminal A and Terminal B. Just match those colors up onto these terminals. All right, it sounds kind of confusing, but it's real easy once you look at it. So again, you know your 12 volts, the ground is uh, black, so that will go into the ground. Oops. This one here has terminals where um, the ADT keypad just had some flying leads that are soldered right in. Cheap little thing. This has terminals, so you put the black under the ground, and then, of course, you put the red under the 12 volts. Let me get that in there. All right. So the black is the very top terminal. The 12 volts is the bottom terminal. Damn, I wish I could get you guys to see that better. Why won't that autofocus? Yeah, it's not focusing too good. Let me let me try this. Uh, come on, focus. Let me see if that'll do it. No, nope, it's just not working, folks. But anyways, believe me, the top terminal is negative. The bottom terminal is positive 12 volts. Now, I got to refresh my memory, too. I got a blue and a yellow left. So I look up at my control panel... And the yellow is on terminal B. So that's what I want to match it up on this terminal. Terminal B is right here next to the black. And that is yellow. So I'm going to pop that in there. And then of course the other, you know, the uh, blue one is terminal A. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wire that into terminal A. So now I got the four wires that were on your old keypad wired up to the new keypad so now let me just throw this backing on here to get it out of my way so it's not flailing around come on get in there I just want to tighten this down okay so right now you should have this on your wall nice and locked in there let me get the dust off of this one so this should be flat on your wall now. So now watch the keypad when I power it up. I'm going to power it up with battery first. And then I'm going to reach over and I'm going to turn on the AC power. Alright. So there we are, Saturday, August 5th. And of course the time is wrong. So let's set the time and date first because I'm pretty sure that's what it's asking you to do. Let me just hit the star. Bus failure because it has bus failure zero because it's still looking for this old keypad. I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. All right, so let's set the time. Um, now to set the time on this, you hit nine, enter your code. Mine is one two three four. Yours could be whatever it, your code is. Oh, is my code one two three four? I hope it is. Star one two three four. Oh, my code is not one, two, three, four. What's the code on this chip? Huh. <clears throat> Whoops. Let's go nine. Enter your code. One, two, three, four. Oh, you know what? I think it's four, three, two, one. Let's go nine, four, three, two, one. Yep, it is. Sorry, guys. <laughs> my code's four, three, two, one. Okay, so now time and date. So you hit the pound sign. And there's the time. I'm going to hit mine at 0852. Hit the pound. Hit the up arrow. It'll be date. And I'll go 080523 pound. Okay, that's done. You hit the star. Just hit the star a couple times. And then hit your up arrow till it says exit programming. And then hit the pound sign. Alright. So now we still got a star flashing. Which is telling you bus failure unit zero. Alright, that's this this keypad here. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on the back of this. Oh, see again with that stupid focus. My camera will not focus for some reason. But anyways, there's a label right up here, guys, and it has it has a number, and that number is uh, 116-990006. Anyways, we'll just remember the number 116. So anyways, now you have to go into program and get rid of this old keypad. So the, the way you do that is you gotta hit the wire out of the way. You gotta go into program. Um, now again, I got another video on how to get into program on these. So to go into program, you hit uh, eight, enter code 4321, enter your command, hit zero, zero. System programming, you hit the pound sign. Then you hit the up arrow until you get to accessory modules, hit the pound sign. Bus devices, hit the pound sign. Now unit zero, that is the one that, that's this one here. That's your old keypad. That's the one that the panel was looking for and it said it said bus zero failure. So once you get to unit ID zero or the one that's showing, you know, it's it's gone, hit the D key. That deletes it. Alright, so now let's go up and we should see a 119. Oh, 116. Is that 116? Jeez, I gotta have my glasses checked. Yes, so this is the keypad right here. This is this the new keypad is 116. All right, so now we're all set there. Now you just get out of program, hit the star, 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 then go up until you get to exit programming, hit the pound sign. All right, system is okay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and arm it. Arm. So it's arm stay, let's disarm. Disarm, enter code 4321. hit the wrong code and that is how you take an old ADT fixed English keypad off your wall toss it and put yourself in a new Superbus 2000 keypad so that you can um, do all kinds of different programming you can add devices delete devices put the wording in on all your devices um, you can change the installer code, you can um, delete all of the old phone numbers from ADT, you can uh, stop this thing from looking for a phone line. There's a dozen reasons why you would want one of these Superbus 2000s on your old ADT system so that you can control it after you kick ADT to the curb. Alright, so guys, that is how you get rid of an old fixed English um, GE Concord 4 or Concord Express keypad and add in a Superbus 2000 so that you can take control of your alarm system. Any questions, comments, leave a link down below and I'll also leave a link down below for where you can purchase one of these Superbus 2000 keypads from me. Thanks for watching guys.